Hi everyone, welcome to episode 23 of Driver's Tooth Blog Radio. As always, I'm your host, David G. Firestone. We're just going to do a news and notes episode this week, not even a br- with a break. And we're going to start with uh, the first race of the uh, Superstar Racing Experience, or SRX. I liked SRX last year, but I did have a few problems with it. One of which was being able to tell the various cars apart since they're all pretty much identical. Now this year, they did a great job of making all the cars look noticeably different while keeping the same SRS aesthetic, so I like that. Um, I like the heat format, though I do think the clock should stop under a yellow flag. That's just my opinion, but I think it would be, uh, you would be giving the fans 10 minutes of racing, not 7 minutes of racing, 3 under caution. Now, I've said this before about SRX, but I'll say it again. I think it should be a six-race formula, but it should be spread out like once every other week. Not, you know, six races in six weeks, but six races across the summer. Especially on a Saturday night when you might not get as many people. I think that spreading out the races would be um, more beneficial. I am doing both dirt and paved tracks, but I think it should be three dirt and three paved as opposed to four paved and two dirt. But I look forward to watching SRX, and um, this week's race was really good, and I'm looking forward to next week. Now let's move on, because I got some news about the Bush Clash in 2023. Now I thought that the Bush Clash at the LA Coliseum was an odd move, because it was way too short in terms of distance and there were issues with no pit crews but I'll get to that in a few minutes now even by short track standards the race was needlessly slow the lack of pit stops hindered the overall feel of the race and I was wondering if this was going to be a trend that NASCAR was going to do like maybe go to I don't know Dallas Cowboys Stadium or you know, Cleveland Browns Stadium or wherever. But it was just announced this week that the Bush Clash at the LA Coliseum would be back for 2023, although no other part of the schedule outside of the Daytona 500 has really been officially announced and the Coca-Cola 600. Uh, Ben Kennedy, Senior Vice President of NASCAR's Senior Vice President of Racing Development Strategy, stated, quote, our entire industry made a bold move by bringing Bush-like clash to the L.A. Coliseum this past February, and it paid off by becoming an instant classic with both new and ex- existing fans. We are intent on showcasing our drivers on the biggest stage, and there is none bigger than the L.A. Coliseum. I can think of a few, but that's just my opinion. We'll be thrilled to return to the heart of Los Angeles to officially start the season and set the stage for the Daytona 500. <clears throat> now, that was from J-Ski, and according to the same J-Ski article, quote, the race delivered on its broad-scale interest with new and existing fans as approximately 70% of ticket buyers were attending their first NASCAR race. How do they calculate those numbers? Where did you get these numbers? How did you figure out these numbers? Because it seems kind of odd that of the forty to 50,000, let's, let's make it 50,000, give them the benefit of the doubt. What they're saying is that of the 50,000 or so fans that attended the race, 35,000 had never attended a race before, which seems odd in and of itself, but when you look at that this took place in California, which has a pretty rich NASCAR history between uh, Auto Club, Sonoma, and Riverside, amongst other tracks, you would think there would have been a lot more established fans who've been to races before attending. Now, I could be wrong, and I, if I am, I'll admit it, but those numbers seem odd to me. There's something off there. Now, Kristen Stowe, who is the head of marketing for the Bush family brands at Anheuser-Busch, said, 
Uh, quote, for decades, Bush Light has been a passionate supporter of NASCAR, and it's through races like the 2022 Bush Class that we were able to bring unmatched motorsports experience to our fans. This provides a unique opportunity for us to engage in for us to engage with both new and lifelong fans in markets where demand for Bush Light is growing. Now look, I like Bush beer, but let's not make it seem as though this is the next great thing. It's a value beer. Now granted, I do like me a good value beer. And while I get that inflation is a is a constant in this day and age, value is becoming chic, but Bush is really not much more than a no-frills beer. Now, granted, a lot of people like no-frills beer. I mean, on my other YouTube channel, DGF299 Productions, shameless plug, I review beer. Um, I've tried pretty much every continent except Antarctica I've tried beer from. I've, I can't even count the number of countries I've tried beer from. But at the end of the day... I like a good value beer just like most people. But it's not the most spectacular beer the world's ever seen. Now, there was another one that caught my attention. Because this it's something that annoys me is when something's legit, but the way it's described, it sounds sketchy. And... Why do I say this? Well, it was announced, uh, I think, last week uh, that NASCAR and the California Natural Resources Natural Resources Agency (CNRA) are creating special NASCAR license plates that will fund California's Outdoors for the All initiative and the NASCAR Foundation. Nicole Krieger of the executive director of the NASCAR Foundation said, "Quote." This is a wonderful way for our fans, for our, for our NASCAR fans in California to not only show their love of NASCAR, but also make a tremendous impact. This initiative also aligns with the, with the NASCAR Foundation's mission, and we're really excited to provide opportunities for greater access for Californians to the natural wonder of their state. Now, I'll... Um, California's Outdoor for All expands outdoor access for all Californians, whereas the NASCAR Foundation works to, quote, improve the lives of children in NASCAR communities. I get the license plate thing. I see what they're doing. I got no problem with that. But I have a question in regards to the NASCAR Foundation. It, it, humor me here. What exactly constitutes a, quote, unquote, NASCAR community? Is it a community with a huge established fan base? Does, is it a community with a racetrack? The term NASCAR community is so generic, even for NASCAR, which is a multinational conglomerate. It also sounds like a scam to some extent because what do they do to quote unquote improve the lives of children? They don't. It's one of the things where you describe it, and the way you describe it, it makes it sound weird, even if it's legitimate. You could really wonder if this is a legit charity or a corporate scam, and while it may, while it is legit, because it's got a deal with the state of California, it sounds fishy by the way you describe it. And that's something that just annoys me. Now we have another issue that's... I didn't even learn about until I was working on the script for this episode. Uh, apparently, as of June 17th, uh, Camping World has not re-signed for the title sponsorship of the Truck Series in NASCAR. Because Camping World's title sponsorship of the NASCAR Truck Series expires at the end of the 2022 season. As I said, as of June 17th, the future of the title sponsorship is up in the air. Camping World has sponsored the Truck Series since 2009, with the deal reportedly being worth about $5 million a year or so. Uh, Camping World last renewed the Truck Series title sponsorship in 2016, 
and the series has been used to promote several brands under the Camping World umbrella. Obviously, there's Camping World, but then there was Gander Outdoors in 2019, and the Gander Out RV and Outdoors in 2020. Then it became the went back to being the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. Uh, in response to a tweet about M&M's pulling all of their NASCAR sponsorships at the end of this year, and I'm going to mispronounce this, and I apologize if I do, Camping World CEO Marcus Lim Limois, Liminois, uh recently tweeted, quote, lots of change happening, and I'm sure more coming. Now, I also need to point out that Camping World is also the title sponsor of not only the above-mentioned SRX, but the professional categories of the NHRA, which was kind of a last-minute deal in 2020 when Coca-Cola pulled their Mellow Yellow sponsorship due to financial issues. I'm going to be honest here. I think they see more value in NHRA and SRX because they're getting a bigger bang for what you're being paid for. And they see more value in the NHRA and SRX because they're not spending as much and they're getting a lot more for their, for their buck. Now, what if Camping World doesn't renew their sponsorship at the end of the season, what's going to happen? Uh, well, there's really only two possible outcomes. Uh, I think what they should start doing, they should start doing this with all of the racing series, is not have it be sponsored by one company for a huge sum, but two or three companies for a lot less. And I say that because it's working out well with the Cup Series where you have four quote-unquote official sponsors and they're all pairing well and they're working together and this NASCAR is getting what they want, the sponsors are getting what they want and they don't have to spend as much money. I see no reason whatsoever why this can't expand to what is now the Xfinity series and eventually the truck series. Now granted with the Xfinity series, Xfinity has demonstrated that they don't mind pumping money into a failing venture. I mean, look at Peacock. I've already talked about them. You know, they're losing almost five billion in they five million in five billion in losses in revenue by the end of this year, and they're not giving up on Peacock. I mean, I think they're going to continue sponsoring the Xfinity series for some time. Um, but I like the idea of the Cup style sponsorship deal because again, it does work. It you do get the exposure, you do get the money, but the sponsors don't have to pay as much and they're getting more for their buck, which in this day and age is a good thing. Uh, now, with our last news story before I start working on what I'm going to be doing during my summer sabbatical, which I will talk about more in detail next week, uh, there's a good, there's a sign of good things to come because Fox Sports, after their, um, their half of the NASCAR season ended, they saw a six percent increase in TV ratings overall for the Cup Series in 2022. In a tweet, they said, "Quote, that's a wrap. Fox Sports concludes its portion of the 2022 NASCAR Cup Series season up six percent in average viewers over 2021." Uh, the 10 races on Fox averaged 4,590,000 viewers, an increase of 10% over 2021, uh, 4,159,000. So viewership is improving, which is a good thing. I like the upswing. Racing can be successful, and I think people are making the right moves, and the right people are in the right places. I only see these numbers going up. And that about does it for this week. I'm Dave Farson. I'm going to be talking more next week about my plans for my summer sabbatical. Um, I'll see you next week on Driver Suit Blog Radio.